We've got BJJ Black Belt, Brandon Keel from Ottawa Jiu-Jitsu. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm good, bro. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we're going to be talking about the international, pardon me, the Toronto International Open IBJJF Jiu-Jitsu Gi and No Gi Championship, which was held this past weekend, September 16th in Toronto. Two of your students competed and both of them won gold. Uh, tell us who competed. Uh, so we had Emra Purton compete, and uh, she's a purple belt. She competed in the adult division, and then we had uh, Jeffrey Anglade compete. He's blue belt and also competed in the adult division. Right on. So uh, first question I, I want to ask, and I guess you can answer for, for both athletes here. I want to know in terms of technique and strategy, uh, can you talk about how their technique and strategy has has evolved leading up to this tournament. Uh, did you incorporate any specific training regiments or techniques that gave them an edge? Um, well, mostly because they've been they've been training with me uh, the entire time that they've been doing jujitsu. So basically, every tournament that they go to gives me data to to help them kind of get better you know we can find the holes in their game and the mistakes that they made so um basically the the leading up to this we we focused a lot on uh being able to work in the top position um and 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 what i mean by work in the top position is is to not get swept and to maintain control and balance so that they can work uh, passing. So um, we worked a lot of that into our game as well as a lot of bottom stuff too. So the way with, that we trained was it for it was very specific, um, meaning like we would we would train a lot of top stuff where the bottom person is uh is trying to sweep but the top person is only trying to stay on top not even trying to pass so a lot of stuff like that we were doing right on can you give us a summary of their uh, i'm sure you you watch their their matches can you kind of give us a highlight or summary of uh and any key moments that uh that you want to share yeah so i mean emra i think she had two matches two or three matches and her fight time was like less than two minutes, I think. Wow. She was able to uh, stay on top, pass the guard, and go directly to the back. She basically made both of her opponents turtle and then capitalized on the, the exposure of the back. Um, and Jeffrey, uh, oh, yeah, and, and she also like submitted both of them with rear naked choke. Nice. Um, yeah, she did really, really well. Like it was, it was very technical. Um, there was a point actually in one of Emma's matches where she got taken down, but she didn't accept the bottom position, and she was on top again as soon as she hit the ground. Um, mm -hmm. But luckily, it was out out of bounds anyway, so they got reset uh, standing up. Um, and with Jeffrey, he he didn't get any submissions, but he maintained uh, control throughout the entirety of his matches i think he might have got scored on in the last like 30 seconds of one of the matches i, I don't 100 percent remember but he um he maintained control throughout all of his matches took his time had really good pace and uh and was able to pass uh guards multiple times and and get enough points to 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 win all of his matches so he won all of his matches with positional dominance and nice. uh and points. right on what was their mood like uh, when they came back overall well, what did they think of the tournament uh, and, and... we were all like we were all riding a high um because the training camp kind of leading up to it we we focused more on skill development than like cardio or even rolling. We didn't roll that much mm -hmm. um, leading up to the competition. Like I'd say, yeah, like as far as rounds, we didn't do very many rounds that were just like rolling. So we didn't do much sparring in, in a sense uh, where they were free sparring. It was all positional. Um, and it was, like I said, it was more of the drilling and stuff. So we did a lot of drilling leading up to this um, this specific tournament. 
Right on. I'm going to move on to the topic of mental preparation. These two seem to to compete a lot uh, from what I know and from what I heard. Yep. Uh, from your perspective uh, as coach, how do they cultivate the kind of mindset needed to dominate in these tournaments? I mean, I think I think a lot of it is the way that they prepare. Um, and And that just means the way that they so the way that they prepare okay they they they're trying to build skills and when they have these skills kind of developed and they they you know have them mastered or whatever i feel right. like that is giving them the confidence to go in there and just kind of have fun you mm -hmm. know it's all about like getting the win and and there's i, I don't feel like I personally put a lot of pressure on them to go out and get the win necessarily or or even go out and smash. I feel like um, the way that we've developed in the last couple of years is it has been in the direction of of going out and and doing the fun part of jiu jitsu, which is which is competing. I, I personally love competing and and I think it's the funnest part of about jiu jitsu and I, I really think that's that's their mindset now too. So uh, mental preparation, I'd say they they stick to um, um, trying to get better at their weaker areas, and then they carry those skills with them, which gives them the confidence to go out there and actually have fun. In terms of uh, yourself as a competitor, what sort of ritual did you do or or how did you handle nerves in general? I don't know if I I don't think I asked you that before, but how do you handle nerves before a major tournament or just before the match? Like I, I'm sure, do you even get nervous at this point? Or and if you do, how do you kind of regulate there, all that? Yeah, there's still nerves. Like I still get nervous, and it's it's been like a while since I competed, but I still get nervous. But you know, um, definitely not even a quarter of the nervousness that I had in the past. Like I am, um, I don't really worry too much about the outcome. I, like I was saying about them, like I, I personally like enjoy competing and especially coming into the black belt. I, I just had more fun and I, I never worried about the outcome. So it didn't matter to me if I won or lost, I just get out there. So the, the nerves actually in the last, I guess the last couple of tournaments I competed in, I had none at all. Wow. Um, That's really cool. Really, yeah. I feel like <clears throat> there's, there's the way that we train in the, the, the gym is, is harder than any of the competitions that I, I do. So, uh, you know, I feel prepared. I, I know where my weak points are. So I know I'm, you know, my cardio is the worst. So I know I'm going to get tired. And as soon as I get tired against somebody, my skill level, they're going to beat me. So, I just go out there and have fun knowing knowing my weaknesses, knowing my strengths. And, uh, and yeah, I don't, I don't think the nerves really get to me that much anymore. I'm going to assume that a lot of this is just through your own experience and your own, you know, repetition and, and exposure to competition. But how do you tell that to, say, uh, you know, a white belt or, or uh, a young competitor? Uh, that being, you know, enjoy the match, don't get caught up in in you know the win loss sort of thing because i'm sure most would you know they they get overwhelmed right it's uh probably you know the first second third tournament whatever they, they don't want to that's it it's it's hard oh, dealing with the the lights and the crowd people watching you you know and uh, i certainly understand um the nervousness and I try to create an environment in my my gym that that kind of you know the the work that they do here is harder than the tournament that they're gonna do for sure. So um, I just try to remind people that it's no different. Like you're just gonna be going against somebody who is not your buddy. You're gonna be competing against somebody that you don't drill with on a regular basis. Um, and like obviously some people uh kind of kind of can take that and go with it but, and other people are are definitely a lot more nervous and they're they're in their head and, and there's not much i can do about that other than right. let them know that 
that if they build the skills then they shouldn't have anything to worry about um you know so uh, again everybody's different i just try to do my best to create an environment that simulates actual competition because we do we do a competition class uh five five nights a week um and and again that's harder than any competition they're gonna do it's just the venue that's literally it and that's what i try to tell people you know uh, at the end of our our hard training sessions i'll kind of talk to people as we're cooling down and just kind of remind them that that the only difference between, uh, you know, the Friday night practice and the Saturday competition is literally the mats that they're rolling on. They're rolling on different color mats at a different gym um, with different people, but the juice is the same. Right on. Well, we'll go back to uh, Emma and Jeffrey and talk about in the moment adjustments. Can you give us some insight into their ability to adapt and adjust to challenges they face during their matches? I think you mentioned that Emma was uh, was taken down, but she I think you said she countered. That. I, I think that, uh, their ability to adjust, it, it comes from just being well-rounded. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a, at my school, I... I don't just favor one thing. We do takedowns. We we spend a lot of time on top. We spend a lot of time doing guard. Um, we spend a lot of time doing different submissions and different ways to control people. Like I I like my students to be well rounded. I would rather them be well rounded than be <clears throat> than I'd ra rather them be well rounded. Um, more so than be a specialist in something. I think uh, having having a, a, a well-rounded skill set is what allows them to do that because whether they're on the bottom, you know, having somebody try to pass their guard and they're trying to sweep or whether on the, the top trying to pass themselves, um, they're ready for it because they've been there. We do a lot of specific training. Like I said, this training camp, we barely rolled and we did specific training most of the time. So they're in these positions, um, you know, 80% of their training this last training camp. So being able to adapt is natural to them because they're so used to being there. You know, whether it's on top or on bottom or they're getting their back taken, they're used to it already. They have somebody trying to take their back. They have somebody trying to pass their guard. And, uh, you know, they show up to, you know, six, seven days a week. They're going to get well-rounded as long as they're they're showing up. So, I mean, uh, adapting to, to, to hard, difficult situations is is not is not a difficult thing because they're they're used to it they have the training they're 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 put into you know the the fire uh here so when they go out they're prepared for anything how do you all keep each other safe in terms of uh you know injury free you know if, if you're you know, if you're leading up to a tournament, you, you mentioned you, you don't roll, you're more focused on on the technique and, and all that. And I would imagine that, that, that that's a great way to avoid potential, uh, not, not to generalize, but it would, it's a great way to avoid, the you know, any minor or, or serious injury. But on the topic of injuries in general, how, how do you all avoid that uh, for the competition team? Well, it's hard to, it's hard to avoid, you know, injuries happen. Emra, uh, she gets injured. She was injured recently. Jeffrey, he was injured fairly recently as well. And in, in Toronto? Uh, no, no, no. Just I believe it was uh, in training, and and one was in a competition. I don't a hundred percent remember what happened to to Jeffrey, but the injuries happen. Like when you're training this much, accidents right. happen. The mats are slippery. Um. But all, all I can do is, you know, I remind them, um, if you're going to be training, you know, once or twice a day, seven days a week, then going 100% should never be a thing. Um, and I remind my students 
regular basis like every day like this week i feel like uh i mean it's only tuesday but uh, in the last couple of weeks i've been telling people you know if you want to train every day uh and be consistent that's going to be the best way to getting good at jujitsu and getting prepared for competitions but if you're going to train every day going 100 percent should never be a thing so i tell people they should go like 60 70 percent so they can train every day and i also you know, I tell people, you gotta, you can't throw submissions on like it's the world championships. You can't, you know, we do a lot of leg locks and stuff too. And I, I tell people they're not allowed to finish them in the gym. Like there's no need to finish nice. the heel in the gym. Like nice. you have the control. You can look at your partner and communicate and be like, look, you, you're not getting out let's just reset now you know right right there's no there's nobody in the gym that's like smashing uh arm bars or kimuras on people there everybody is very respectful I, i'd say we have have a really good group in that sense right on i have two more questions for you uh this one's dealing with uh, training and partnership how have they pushed and supported each other in the gym to reach this level of performance and i guess this applies to to the whole competition team as as a whole, uh, you know, pushing and motivating each other to, you know what I mean, to to give their best on the mats. I mean, it's, they both want it, you know. Um, Emra, Emra is a, a competitor, you know, at, at the core of her, and so is Jeffrey. Like, he's, he's a, he's a, he wants to compete. He wants to get out there and win. He wants to do his best. Right. And Emmer does too. And just the communication that we all have with each other. Um, and the, you know, the way that we kind of hype each other up for these, these competitions, that kind of keeps everybody going. There, I haven't, there hasn't really been a time in the last couple of years where we haven't been excited for competitions. And if, if we you know, if we haven't been excited or Emra or Jeffrey hasn't been excited, um, I try to get around that by just focusing on what's in front of us. So that's a that's another thing, too, is, is kind of focusing on the goal of the day rather than focusing always on, you know, what's going on in a month, what, what competition is next, what... You know, like, cause that could be overwhelming. So, just focusing on on getting a little bit better every day, I think that has really been the key to having having our group continually competing and and hitting all these tournaments. I I, I really think uh, I really think that's that's what's what's keeping us going. In terms of uh, future tournaments and so on what's next on the horizon for them and how do you plan to help continue to own their craft and potentially dominate the next tournament well the way that i see it we're just going to keep rolling through people <laughs> hopefully but the 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 truth of it is 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 just building the skills you know that we got emra is a purple belt jeffrey is a blue belt and there's still like, there's still a lot to learn. There's still a lot to get better at. And uh, and the next competition I think is SAU this weekend actually. Um, so that's the next one is SAU in Montreal. So we're all heading to Submission Arts United. We have a few people competing on that one. The next one after that is uh, the Ontario um, Open the Nogi version. So uh, that's a big one. Everybody should be going to do that. The Ontario, that? one of the biggest, best uh, competitions in Canada, Ontario Open. Um, I That's in the Toronto area. And okay. I don't actually, I, I don't have the poster right here. It's a, I'm at the gym, but it's a, at the, out in the, on the wall somewhere. But uh, right. that's in October. That's a huge one. Everybody should go do that. Uh, they give trips out to Worlds because they're nice. trying to help athletes, uh, you know, progress. Right. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a no-gi tournament. It's one of the biggest ones. Um, 
and it's really well run too so uh i can't wait to actually get out there it's been been a minute um oh you'll be competing at that one i'm not going to be competing but uh, okay. i'll actually be there in toronto okay, okay. Uh, i think if not whatever i it doesn't matter if i'm there or not like i'm not competing i feel like i do all the coaching in the gym anyways if they if they actually need me there then then i probably am not doing my job that well but um mm -hmm. I'll be there in Montreal this weekend, um, helping coach. We got uh, a kids team competing. We have the adults competing, and uh, there's gi, no gi. Uh, SAU is going to be pretty fun this weekend too, actually. And yeah, they're they're more than ready. Uh, Emma actually was supposed to do the gi at the IBJJF, but uh, they they misunderstood an email that we sent. And like took her out of the gi, but kept her in no gi and whatever. It got weird, but we 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 ran with it because Emma hasn't been training no gi that much. But she went out there and, and won a no gi tournament. Um, that's really uh, impressive. Yeah, it's that's yeah. that's a thing I try to tell people all the time, especially you know, you're you're more of a beginner. You, you know, white belt, blue belt, purple belt. It doesn't matter if you train gi or no gi they're both going to help you get good and it's, it's, it's more time on the mat. So you might as well just train both. If you're trying to be, if you're trying to be a specialist that early, like, yeah, it's maybe it's good to do, but I, I really believe that uh, training gi and no gi, it doesn't matter. You can go out and do whatever tournament you should be ready for both. Um, um, but yeah, so the next one is SAU. That's this weekend. We'll be heading up on Friday, uh, compete all day Saturday, and then uh, and yeah, that's uh, that's the next one. Any any other events on the horizon? So that that's uh, up, that's this weekend, and then you mentioned October. Uh, October, um, the the Ontario Open, right? right. Everybody should go do that. It's on smooth comp. And then there's actually a tournament in Ottawa. So we should have a bunch of competitors doing that one as well. And you can find that on, on smooth comp as well, I think. So what's it uh, called? Uh, the Ottawa open. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. and that's, that's in October. That's in October. I think it's the 21st. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, there's so many dates. I need a calendar in front of me so I can right. remember all stuff um but yeah i believe like the 16th or something is maybe the 16th is the ontario open and then the 21st i believe is the ottawa open uh the ottawa open is a gi only tournament i'm fairly certain and then like i said the, the ontario open is a no gi tournament it's awesome that there's so many tournaments for for competitors it's, it's so, essentially every weekend you could be competing that's brilliant yeah it's really cool. Um, it's a lot different than when I was coming up uh, almost 20 years ago. Like I've been, I've been doing jujitsu for 19 years now, and and the amount of competitions that I get to go to is like, it's it's absolutely insane. Uh, back when I was training um, in Nova Scotia, there was not, you know, there's there's uh, the Titans one, the Abaya one. Um, uh, Fit Plus did one. Uh, um, yeah, like all the gyms ran ran a tournament back home, and right. that was like four or five tournaments in a year. So we traveled to Montreal a lot before uh, before Montreal made jujitsu illegal, <laughs> which right. it's legal now. So now you know we're going to Montreal this weekend to compete. I hope it stays legal forever. <laughs> yeah, there should be no reason why it shouldn't be. <laughs> Because, yeah, because, I mean, you know, I, I think people learn best in competitions, right? And, and that's where they yeah. become better yeah. competitors. Yeah, All right, Brendan. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I truly believe that uh, that competing, like, is like a 3x multiplier on your jiu-jitsu skills. Like, your coach gets to see your mistakes, you know, if they're there. And, uh, and, and you really get to put to test your jujitsu against people that are are literally trying to beat you you know like they're not your friends necessarily like you probably right. compete against your friends once in a while but you're not competing against the your teammates you're competing against different teams so you, you, you there's no no mercy say you know 
for sure. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you very much for your time and uh, all the best uh, at the uh, SAU this weekend and uh, yep. all those other tournaments uh, moving forward. Have a good yep. evening. Thanks a lot, Carmammy, and I uh, look forward to talking with you soon. Definitely, man. Take care.